You're listening to the Blue Jay Breakdown. Welcome to the Blue Jay Breakdown, Anna Bellinghausen. And joining us on the phone is Drake Keeler. Drake, how are you today? I'm doing good. Well, thanks for hopping on. Let's talk some Blue Jay basketball. But before we get started, I want to remind you about our friends with the Omaha Supernovas. You can head out to a match March 14th. They're finally back home after four matches on the road. It's a 7 p.m. first serve against the Atlanta Vibe. You can get your tickets at supernovas.com. Drake, let's get into some Blue Jay women's basketball. The regular season is now complete. The Jays end at number 21 in those AP polls, and they are fresh off a win at Seton Hall up in Orange, New Jersey, 72-65 dub. Drake, first off, impressions and takeaways from that win. Yeah, what a win. What a season it's been uh, for Creighton, of course. Um, so that, that was a tough – that looked like it was going to be a tough game for a little while. Uh, Seton Hall was fighting with them. Just like in the first matchup they had, but Creighton, once again, as they've done in so many games this season, to ended up taking control, worked through some of the turnover issues they had against in that game, and yeah, came out with the win as we come as we've come to expect. Yeah, let's take a little bit of a deeper look into that box score. So Jamie Horan sticks out right away, fourteen points, five for five shooting, and four for four from three. How was she so impactful in this ballgame? Yeah, well, she made her shots. <laughs> um, and, you know, I, I, there, there are times where that really is, you know, what there is to it. You know, that's what a lot of what she brings. She can shoot just like um, most of that bench. And that, that's what the team is going to want. Uh, e- even just one player having an impact, knocking down a few shots. And she obviously did a little more than that. Uh, so it, it's great to see. Uh, you know, I feel like Jim Flannery's talking about, you know, she, he sees the way she shoots the ball in practice, wants that to translate to the game. Obviously, she's not going to shoot 100% every game, but th- this was in line with what the team wants to see. This was a really good performance from her, just crucial buckets when they needed it. Yeah, and then another thing that sticks out, Emma Ronsick on the opposite end of that, just seven points, and we usually see her up around 18, 20 points per game, even more than that. How did they limit Emma Ronsick? Yeah, I mean, she's had just some games like that and obviously not too much of a concern. Honestly, she's just going to have some off games like that. Teams are going to be physical with her, try to limit her as much as you can with how talented she is. Uh, but, you know, it, it is, you'll take that. And obviously, Creighton was able to get going in other ways. Yeah, it helps when you have Morgan Molly and Lauren Jensen right alongside with her. Uh, let's take a look at the Big East tournament. So that bracket is all released. Creighton, once again, the number two seed there. So they will not have to play on Friday, March 8th. That first round will be uh, the 8 and 9 seed, Butler versus Providence, and then Seton Hall against DePaul, the 7 and 10 seed, respectively, and then Georgetown, Xavier, the 6 and 11 seed. So Creighton gets to miss out on that first day. It's always great to have that bye, and then the quarterfinals start off. So Creighton will get... I believe the winner of Seton Hall DePaul. That was yes. my right. Yep, because Villanova Marquette are marked uh, four and five, so they'll play each other. So Creighton will get Seton Hall or DePaul. So could see another Seton Hall matchup if it goes chalk. Yeah, and that's one that I mean, obviously, you'd be confident in Creighton, but it'd be a little annoying because that's what well, that's yeah. what Seton Hall's been able to do is just be really annoying in those matchups. They've been close. Uh, Creighton's been able to pull away and close those ones out, but. It's going to be a tough matchup. DePaul can be as, as talented as well, could potentially put up a challenge. So, obviously, you like Creighton's chances, but, you know, those are some solid teams uh, in that uh, matchup. Yeah, another thing to note, Creighton and UConn, obviously, on opposite sides of the bracket. So, a rematch between those two teams would not happen until the championship. St. John's is on the same side of that bracket, so they'd have to go through that number three seed. Again, of course, if it goes all chalk there. As, uh, St. John's would get the winner of Georgetown Xavier. So I think a favorable path for the Blue Jays to get to the championship, Drake. Absolutely, because they also avoid Marquette, which mm-hmm. is in that four seed, like you said. They're the only biggest team besides UConn to beat uh, Creighton this year. So that that that's really encouraging. St. John's, obviously they can play, uh, but you know this, this is the path you want. Uh, avoiding Marquette, played two really close games with them. 
and they're going to have a really good path to that uh, championship game likely against UConn. So after the Big East tournament, obviously turning our attention into March Madness, Drake, do you see any movement in where Creighton will be lined up on Selection Sunday? Not really. Um, and the good news is there's no drop, but they've, like like we've been talking about, kind of been stuck on that six seed. I, I, I wonder if the committee might have a little higher than some of the projections do. I don't think they'll get in the hosting range necessarily, but they could get that five seed. I, I really think that's in play, um, even with just making the Big East championship and, say, losing the UConn. I think that's a possibility for sure. So, I mean, they're going to have good seeding. They're going to have a decent route. I think you would really love to get that five seed to be matched up with a four seed in the second round potentially, although that first round matchup likely won't be um, a guaranteed win either. But, yeah, they're they're in a great spot right now, of course. Yeah, I think if you can avoid the situation from last year where they had to play, uh, the team coming off the, the play-in game I think would be huge for them. Yeah, there are some really good teams that are going to be in those playing games. Mississippi State was really good last mm-hmm. year. Uh, and if you can get up to a five seed, get 12 matchup, uh, you know, you can still run into one of those tough opponents. But, I mean, you just want to set yourself up for success as much as you can, of course. Absolutely, Drake. Throughout this whole season, though, how have you seen this Creighton team evolve? And to the point that they're at right now, I, I remember Lauren Jensen saying in the press conference that she feels like this team hasn't even reached their ceiling yet. But where do you see this team at from an outside perspective? Yeah, it is. They are firing on all cylinders. They won, you know, all the games they're supposed to win. And, you know, when they lost to Marquette and Green Bay and UConn twice. Those are good teams. Those are all teams. Besides, maybe Green Bay might miss out, but they they all might make the tournament. Um, okay. So th- those are uh, Marquette might as well. Um, but yeah, so they they've been really good. They haven't had any major letdowns. Definitely not. Um, yeah. So that consistency has been impressive. Emma Ronsix growth and you know being kind of the top player on this team has been really impressive. It's not maybe what people expected but just being so as good as she's been it's really impressive and they're gonna you'd love to see them take that into the postseason it makes you it gives you some confidence that you don't think they're gonna lose you know a, another first round game like they did last year yeah well Jim Flannery said on senior night let's make this the best march ever so if his word is true I think the Blue Jays are set up for some success in this month. Drake, thank you so much for joining me via phone this time. This has been the Blue Jay Breakdown. A Heard at Sports Network production.